Hi, and welcome back to Beans and Bezels. Unimatic is an Italian microbrand, and they have become quite popular over the last few years. Most of their watches are released in limited quantities and end up sold out within a couple of days. The design team behind Unimatic have impressive portfolios, but I've often wondered where in the horological microcosm do these watches fit. After spending a few days with one, I personally believe that they are closer to the designer watch category than the watch enthusiast watch category, primarily because they've managed to alienate a large section of the microbrand watch community with their arguably steep prices. But one thing is for certain, they've built an impressive identity in a very short period of time. And just like Ming, when you see a Unimatic watch in the wild, you know it is a Unimatic. So controversy aside, these are unique watches that appear to be incredibly successful. I purchased the Unimatic U2F from their website an hour after it released, and less than 12 hours later, they were all sold out. Let's check it out. The case has very interesting proportions with a 38.5mm diameter, 47.5mm lug to lug width, and a 13.75mm height. 1.5mm of that height is the crystal, so you're looking at closer to 12.25mm for case height. The case is brushed with a combination of radial and horizontal brushing. The finishing is pretty good for what it costs. From above, this watch looks quite conservatively designed and looks like a vintage dive watch, but that is a misdirection as this case is anything but conservative. The side profile should give you a better look at the madness that is this case. The lugs remain straight and both the bottom and top surfaces of the watch curve down to meet it, maintaining perfect symmetry. There is a massive 8mm screw down crown at the 3 o'clock position. I love big crowns, so this is a total win. The crown is very easy to grip and operate. Unfortunately, there is some crown wobble, but the case's crown tube design is fantastic, and the way the crown screws into the case is very reassuring of the 300 meters of water resistance. There is a fixed bezel section, but the entire case appears to be a single piece construction. This aggressive bezel houses a heavily domed sapphire crystal that protrudes out of the bezel by about 1.5mm. The quality of the crystal is excellent and there isn't any distortion or reflection. The lugs are drilled through and strap changes were effortless. The lugs are straight and don't curve down at all. Flipping it over you have a solid screw down case pack with what appears to be a military hand signal guide and the serial number engraved onto it. The dial is clean and restrained but still leaves much to talk about. Unimatic sells this dial and case configuration as a field watch but I'm not sure I agree. The dial has a media blasted base that is painted grey. This translates into a matte finish with no reflections or glossy shine. You then have an outer seconds or minute track that is painted with a silvery grey paint that can either disappear into the dial completely or shine in high contrast. This dynamic appearance is quite interesting to see and part of the minimalist design aesthetic. The hour indices are a combination of rectangles and circles with the large triangle at the 12 o'clock position. These are entirely made of C3 Super Luminova and are outlined with the same silvery paint used on the marker ring. These white indices remain in contrast with the dial at all times, making the watch easily reusable and permanently visible. The finishing of the printing across the dial is very good and the overall dial finishing is very clean for a $500 watch. The hands are media blasted and painted with the same color as the base of the dial. The hands are generously filled with loom and the loom also helps with the visibility of the hands. The hands are finished very well and very clean. The second's hand is also painted grey and has a loomed lollipop counterbalance. The tip of the second's hand is painted white to match the other loomed elements, but unfortunately the second's tip is not loomed. All the hands are well proportioned and the second's hand extends all the way up to the second's or minute track. Overall, I think this dial is very unique. It is easily readable even though it has a lot of overlapping colours. The only contrast here is between the grey hues of the dial and the colour of the loom. I think this design is pretty cool and very different from what's been done before. The loom is not very impressive, sadly. The indices and hands are quite large, which means they could have done a good job here. The hands are reasonably well loomed and the lollipop seconds hand counterbalance is loomed too. I think they had a great opportunity to loom the white tipped seconds hand, but did not. The indices are lightly loomed and as expected fade much quicker than the hands. Overall, I'd say that the loom is adequate, but not excellent. They had all the ingredients to deliver an excellent loom experience, but unfortunately did not. This watch uses Seiko NH35A movement. Unimatic continues to stir up the watch community by offering this $20 movement on their $500 watches. While I am a firm believer of the fact that watches are more than just their movements, I also expect excellent value to be delivered in other avenues, such as manufacturing, design, finishing, and loom. It isn't a secret that you're paying a premium to own this watch, but the ghost date position doesn't do it any favors in trying to deliver that premium experience. At least they didn't try to insult your intelligence by shoving the term workhorse down your throat or try to tell you that many experts believe that this movement is as accurate as many Swiss competitors. No, they just give you a Seiko NH35 and tell you to live with it. I'm actually fine with this. Just don't shit on my plate and tell me it's cake. To give credit where due, this watch came very well regulated and is probably the best NH35 I've logged so far. 
Over a two-day period, I observed roughly plus three seconds per day. So from a purely timekeeping perspective, no complaints here. The case was clearly designed without traditional wristwatch ergonomics in mind, but don't let the awkward shape and size fool you. This watch is surprisingly comfortable and is better balanced than some of the other more traditional watches that I've reviewed. This watch does sit tall, not only because of the 13.75mm height, but because of the straight lugs. On my 6.25 inch wrist, I didn't have any overhang thanks to the 47.5mm lug to lug with. The case back is flat and close to the case, which helps it stay well balanced. But this watch does wear larger than you would expect from a traditional 38.5mm diameter, 47.5mm lug to lug with watch. This watch makes a statement, but not in an obnoxious or obtrusive manner. It makes a statement in that it's likely to catch your attention because of its unorthodox design and unconventional wrist presence. So to wrap things up, does this watch deliver enough value in terms of build quality, design and loom to make up for the polarizing choice of movement? I'm still undecided on this. If you're after a watch that is unique and has a lot of very interesting design cues, yes. But if you're just after a really good watch under $500, I think the answer is no. The build quality and design are mostly deserving of the premium, but the loom and movement do not. This brings me back to my opening statement. To me, this is a designer watch and a very good one at that. The case is interesting and the dial is unlike anything I've seen before in terms of the overall experience. But this is going to be a hard sell to the average micro brand watch enthusiast and will probably resonate better with someone who just wants a good looking or unique looking watch. Thanks for watching and don't forget to read the full review in the link below.